video we're going to look at three different questions that use this frequency distribution as a base for asking some questions to see how much we understand about measurements like the median, the mean, the mode, and the range, and how they're affected by the distribution of your data. By looking at the shape, we can answer these questions without doing any calculations, but in order to help you understand what you're supposed to be able to see in these graphs, I'm going to put this into a frequency distribution table. So we'll begin by deciding what the class limits are here. We notice that we have 10, 20, 30, 40, and these are ages, right? But they're not saying that we have 10, 10-year-olds, um, 10 only 10-year-olds that were, these were um, ages at death of traumas at a certain hospital. So certainly we wouldn't have just five people that were exactly 10 years old and 18 people that were exactly 20 years old. This is an age range with the midpoint being shown there in the center of each bar. So we need to figure out what the lower limit should be and the upper limit should be. So it looks like you know between halfway between 10 and 20 is 15. So I'm going to start at 5 and go up to 14 and then let 15 be part of the next class and go up to 24 and continue on in this way until we have all the way up to 94. All right, so now the frequency would be the heights of the bars. So we have three for the first one, 18 for the second one, 13 for the third, class of 30 somethings, uh, 6, then 5, then 3, 1, 0, and 1. All right, so now let's, we're going to be asked questions about the mean, the median, the mode, and the range. Actually, I don't think the mode appears here, the mean, the median, and the range. So let's, let's calculate, well not calculate, yeah, we are calculating sort of um, if we said it was from the maximum to the minimum, then we would say the range was about 89. And the median would be the value in the center of the data. So we have a total of 50 values here. We were told it's a sample of 50, and all my, my um, counts do add up to 50, so that's a good sign. And halfway across 50 is 25. So the median will be the divider of the lower 50% and the upper 50%. So I got to go between the 25th value and the 26th value to find the median. And these first three classes um, will add up to more than 25. So I'm going to land in this class to find my median. So the median could be anywhere from 25 to 34. So I'm going to assume, just as an estimate, that it's the midpoint of that class. So I'm going to do the average of the two limits for the third class as my median estimation. And then my mean estimation, I would take all the midpoints of each class And then I'm going to multiply them, f times x. I'm doing the um, weighted mean formula here and get my sum of all the products. And then to get my estimated mean, divide the total of the products by the sample size. Okay, so I'm estimating that my range is 89, my mean is 29.5, median, that is, is 29.5, and my mean is 31.7. So this first question asks, for the data described by the histogram, would you say that the median will be higher than the mean? Now, I know just by looking at this, that the median will not be higher than the mean because the median stays put even when you have a skew. So the median will remain where it is, even though there's extra higher values down here in the tail. However, the mean will be dragged to the right from where it would normally be. 
if this was perfectly symmetric and bell-shaped, then the mean and the median would be the same, and the mode for that matter. But because it's dragged out to the right, the mean gets scooted over. So the mean should be higher than the median. So let's see if we have that as an option. The median will be smaller than the mean. Yes, that makes sense. Even in our estimation, the mean is lower than the mean. Our median, <laughs> keep mixing those words up, the median is lower than the mean. So that seems right. But there's also an option that B and D are correct. So D says that the median and the range will be about the same, and that just isn't even close to being true. We know the range is going to be closer to the 90, and the median is somewhere around 30, so we're going to go with option B. Now in this one, we're asked, same picture, uh, for the data described above, would you say the median will be bigger than, is this the same one? I guess it is. Let me go to the next one. But this one, it says a possible value of the median in this example is. So now we have to try to guess which one of these values could be the median. Now, I've estimated my median to be 29.5. However, my, my um, limits of the third class is where I expect to find, the third class is where I expect to find my median. And that means I could have a value anywhere between 25 and 34. So 33 would be the best answer out of the choices given. All right, and here, assume that the largest observation in this data set is 90. Okay, it is. Okay, we'll assume that. If this observation were wrongly recorded as 900, then what would happen? Then what would happen? All right, so now let's read the options here. Both the mean and the median will not change. Well, that can't be true because we know that if you add a very large extreme value, the mean is going to get dragged out more. Um, both the mean and the median will change. Well, we know the median will not change. It stays where it is, right? So those two can't be right. The mean will stay the same, but the median will change. Nope, it's the opposite, right? The median is the one that stays the same, and the mean is the one that changes. The mean will decrease, but the median won't change. If that's half right, the median won't change, but the mean will just get bigger, okay? That 900 is going to drag the mean farther out to the tail, way out. All right, so um, hopefully it's going to be this one. Let's see, the only one left. The mean will increase, but the median won't change. And that's it.